This video is on deception and disruption. Deception is a cybersecurity defense practice that aims to deceive attackers by disseminating a set of traps and decoys throughout a system's infrastructure to imitate genuine assets. While disruption is an intentional or unintentional incident that result in a security breach, damage to the digital devices and networks, or a network outage. There are five terms you need to know for the Security Plus 601 exam when it comes to deception and disruption. First one is honeypots. Honeypots are deception devices or systems deployed to trap attackers attempting to gain unauthorized access to a system or network. Basically something that looks legitimate but it is not. And they're often deployed in the DMZ and configured the same way as servers to entice attackers. They're placed in a controlled setting and are constantly watched. Then we have honey files, which is a deception-based intrusion detection mechanism. Think of it as an alarm that sets off in your house. A honey file is a bait file that is designed for hackers to open. And when the file is accessed, an alarm is triggered. A honey file could be any file and you could call it whatever you want. Call it admin password, for example. Then we have HoneyNet. HoneyNet is a decoy network that contains one or more honeypots of a real corporate network that in reality is fake. Company spends a lot of money on decoy like this to study attacker's techniques and behaviors. Next, we have fake telemetry. Telemetry are simply data collected from network environment. They can be analyzed and be used to monitor multiple things like performance, security, availability of the network. Network administrators use telemetry to respond quickly and resolve network issues in real time. Now, fake telemetry means fake data from the network environment. Fake data are necessary to trick attackers or even malicious code into thinking that an attack is occurring against a real target by providing a simulated responses from other network equipments. Without it, you won't fool the attackers or malware. It's like using an empty bank to lure in bank robbers. Certain malware needs to be fed data to keep it active for analysis. Otherwise, it may be programmed to self-destruct. For example, let's say there's a malware that may be watching for internet usage. If over a period of time there are no active internet usage that is expected of a normal person, then this malware may suspect that it is in a honey net and is being analyzed, causing it to self-destruct. Lastly, we have DNS sinkhole. DNS sinkholing is a mechanism aimed at protecting users by intercepting DNS requests attempting to connect to a known malicious or unwanted domains and returning a false or rather controlled IP address. It's a technique that can be used to prevent hosts from connecting to or communicating with known malicious destinations such as botnet CNC server. The sinkhole servers can be used to collect event logs as well. This technique can be used for both malicious and investigative purposes. It will be useful for finding out what malware may be trying to connect to. Oh, yeah.